Hello there. So this is a short case study on equine pain scoring and just an applied example of how you might use it in practice. So we're going to talk you through um, a case. So this is a 16 year old retired thoroughbred gelding. He's kept as a pet and his owner, who's exp an experienced horse owner, called one evening um, to say that the horse was out at grass and they'd noticed in the last couple of hours he'd stopped eating and he's not himself. He had been fine earlier in the day when they checked on him previously. He's no other relevant medical history or ongoing issues. He's not on any other medication at the moment and nothing has changed in his lifestyle in the last um, few weeks. He's out of grass full time. He's normally a very calm and friendly individual who loves human attention. So if we go and have a look at the animal, the first thing we want to ask ourselves is, does he have a pain face? So this is using um, ClearUp's pain scoring model. We want to examine the animal's ears and eyes and tension in his facial muscles and shape of his muzzle and nostrils to decide does he have a pain face. So a little video clip of him here. We're looking to see, start at the top and work down, are his ears freely mobile or are they held rigidly to the side or back? Is there tension in the muscles over the eye given the horse slightly anxious experience? Is there tension in the muscles on the side of the face? And then we're looking at the shape of the nostrils. Are they slightly flared or dilated? Is there tension in the muscles of the lips making the uh, outline of the muzzle appear slightly v-shaped rather than a smooth curve. You can also see this horse is displaying what's called a flame in reaction um, where he's holding his top lip rigidly up in the air. Next thing we want to we can check is is he interested in feed? Normally this horse is is friendly and used to people and will and will eat feed if offered it. So we've offered him a little handful of food here to see what happens. So you can see he looks at it and thinks about it but no, doesn't actually eat it. So just watch that again. You can see he, he's been polite and is interested, but isn't actually ingesting the feed. Some other clinical findings to note. He's calm, but as we walked into the field, he stayed where he was. He didn't move towards us and like he normally would, and he didn't react. There's strange people walking up to him and he's not really paying any attention to us. He does occasionally look back at his flanks, He's not grazing and there's no lameness evident when we ask him to walk. He's able to fully weight bear on all four limbs. There are some fresh droppings in the paddock, um, so there's no sign of him having stop passing droppings. Clinical examination then, his heart rate is 52 beats per minute. Respiratory rate is 10 breaths per minute. His gut sounds are three pluses in all quadrants. So that's left and right dorsal and ventral quadrants of the abdomen. His rectal temperature is 37.8 degrees Celsius. His mucous membranes are pale pink, his capillary refill time is less than two seconds and his jugular fill is normal. So they're just some basic clinical findings. So you can think about that and how do they co compare to the findings for a normal horse. We want to move on then and think about his pain score. So I've got a blank um, pain scoring sheet here. I'm going to ask you to pause the video now and based on the information you have about this patient, I want you to assign him a pain score in each of the relevant roles. Um, he's not in a stall, so the location in the stall, one is not applicable in this case. But the rest of them, we can assign the patient a score with the information we have. And then we'll total all our scores to see what our overall is. So if we move on to uh, fill in the scoring sheet, here's how I scored him. He has a pain face present. If you go back and look at the video clip, you can see that his ears are held to the sides. There's tension over his eyes and he's got tension in his muzzle. The gross pain behaviour um, is the occasionally looking at his flanks and his flame and reaction. So he is showing some intermittent pain behaviour. He's moving less than normal, not restless, but at the same time, he's not moving around like you'd expect him to. We can ignore the next row because it's not relevant. His posture is normal and his head position, he's generally holding his head above the level of his withers. So we give him a score of zero there. We mentioned he occasionally looks at his flanks and he's, while he's been polite, he's not as friendly or interactive as normal. He's not um, paying much attention to the people around him. And when we offer him some food, he looks at it but doesn't eat it. So if we total up all those scores, uh, we end up with a pain score of 10, which is ind indicative of mild to moderate pain. So if we take this animal then and think about what might be wrong with him, we can make a presumptive diagnosis of spasmodic colic based on the fact that he has signs of abdominal discomfort. Uh, he's not eating. His intestines are more active than normal in all four quadrants. He's got intestinal hypermotility. Remember, normal motility would be indicated by two plus 
one plus would be present but quieter than normal and then a minus sign would indicate alias or the absence of normal intestinal motility. So in this case his intestines are hyperactive in all four quadrants that we listen to and his hydration status is normal, his mucous membrane colour is pale pink which is normal for a horse and his capillary refill time and jugular fill are normal indicating that he doesn't have dehydration or hypovolemia. Um, in terms of overall pain behaviour we've mentioned the flame reaction and the fact he's not eating um, but you can note that this animal isn't dramatically violent he's not lying on the ground trashing and rolling so it would be easy to miss the fact that he's in pain prey animals are fairly subtle in how they display signs of mild to moderate pain so it is easy to overlook it which is one of the advantages of using pain scoring in this species in terms of um, what we do next there's a question we want to ask the owner so again thinking about the information we have so far there's one more question we want to ask and that question is, when did he last have a tapeworm dose? So um, tapeworms in horses are a common cause of intermittent um, spasmodic colics. The tapeworms tend to accumulate at the ileocecal valve, particularly the Anopocephala perfoliata species. And they often give rise to this type of mild spasmodic colics. So the owner says, oh yeah, he last had a, um, a worm dose about nine or ten months ago. They can't remember exactly what brand or active ingredient it was but he definitely hasn't had one in that length of time and that is longer than the pre-patent period for equine um, tapeworm so we can make a presumptive diagnosis because his horse clinical signs are going to go ahead and give him um, treat him for tapeworms I'm not going to wait and take a faecal sample because he's clinically abnormal and also false negatives are common lots of tapeworm infected horses may not shed um, segments in their feces so we could miss an infestation so in this case, we're going to give the animal um, 1,000 milligrams of phenylbutazone intravenously for pain relief, along with 30 mils of hyacine, which is a smooth muscle relaxant. It's short acting. It won't make, it will help the abdominal discomfort to pass and reduce that hypermotility in the intestine. And then we're going to give him um, Equimax oral gel for horses. In this case, that's a combination of moxidectin and praziquantel. And praziquantel is the ingredient that will specifically um, target and kill equine tapeworms. So this is the horse uh, being treated. You can see that he's still showing some signs of discomfort, but he is standing quietly and not objecting to being treated. We're giving him the uh, phenylbutazone in this 10 ml syringe, and he's just had his 30 ml of hyacine. So I'm going to wait 20 minutes to reevaluate the patient to allow time for the medication to take effect. So we went off and had a cup of tea with the owner and came back in and checked on the horse. And when we returned, 20 minutes later, we found the horse uh, back grazing, much more like his normal self, friendly, interested in what was going on, um, quite polite. But you can see he's much more relaxed and interested in his surroundings. This is him back to his normal self. And when we look at his face, uh, you can see that the, the pain face is gone. He's nice and relaxed. So that was the outcome for that particular animal. So this time his pain score is zero, which is great. And we followed up with the owner and he didn't have any more clinical signs. So that's just a short run through of how you might use equine pain scoring in practice and how easy and quick it is to apply. And also its value in helping you to detect and quantify mild to moderate pain, particularly in prey species. As I say, you won't miss the horse that's trashing around um, being very dramatic with severe pain. But that's only a minority of the cases that we see. A lot of animals will have mild to moderate pain and we need to treat those and recognise them. So this can be a useful way to do it. That's it. If you have any questions, you can contact me on my email address here. Thanks.